so much into you yet another time to know what is going on in our world of politics. This is One World TV and I am your presenter, Ogoshinye, and here are the headlines in brief. Ababio elected Senate President and Jibrin emerges to deputy Senate President. Asu Asu expressed doubts over student loan. Rogue Corps extort 153,000 Naira from undergraduates. CP removes DPO. And now here are the headlines in view. Ababio elected Senate President. It says former Governor of Aquaibon State, Gosfu Ababio, has been elected as the Senate President of the 10th Assembly. Ababio, who is the preferred candidate of the All Progressive Congress, was paired with the Senator representing Kanu South, Jibrin Barao. The voting in the election of a new state Senate President had commenced with Ababio and former Governor of Zamfara State Senator elect Abdul Daziz Yari going toe to toe. After a quick recess, Sani Tambua, the clerk of the National Assembly, declared Ababio as the Senate president, having gathered 63 votes, leaving his rival with 46 votes. However, the senator elect representing Scano South Senatorial District, Jibrin Barao, has emerged as the deputy Senate president. Barao was nominated by the former governor of Ebony State, David Omahi, and seconded by the lawmaker representing Kwara North. Saliu Mustafa. Barao accepted the nomination and emerged as the Deputy Senate President of the 10th Assembly, unopposed. Having emerged unopposed, the clerk to the National Assembly, Magaji Tambua, declared Barao as the Deputy Senate President. A big congratulations to both of them. I believe that their post will be able to better the lives of every Nigerian. Another headline, Asu, Asu expressed doubts over student loan. It says President Bola Tinubu on Monday 12th of June in Abuja signed the student loan bill into law. The signing of the bill was in fulfillment of one of his campaign promises to liberalize funding of education. A member of the presidential strategic team, Dele Alake, told State House correspondents on Monday evening, the Student Loan Act becomes Tinubu's second piece of legislation signed since he assumed office two weeks ago. The bill will enable indigent students to assess loans at interest-free rates. It was reported that the piece of legislation, sponsored by the Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Miller, passed the third reading at the House on May 25, 2023. According to Alake, who was accompanied by other members of the media team, including Tunde Rahman and Abdulaziz Abdulaziz, and Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education, David Adejo. The new law mandates prospective beneficiaries to show proof of their origins. The presidential aide said the move was in sync with standard practice in developed climates globally and would ease access to education. This, so this is a boost to our youth and students nationwide. On his path, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education at Dejo, said by implication, the current scholarship board of the federal government will become a loan board capable of offering educational credit facilities to qualified applicants. He congratulated the president for the bill. What we have now is that nobody should say money did not allow him to go to school. However, reacting to this bill, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, described the loan bill as discriminatory between the children of the rich and the poor. National President ASU Prof. Emmanuel Osodeke, in an interview with journalists, said the union will react soon, but everyone knows our position on student loans because you will end up incubating the children of the poor with loans and debt after graduating. This is discriminatory. If what I read online is correct, he retorted, it's only for children whose parents earn at least 500,000 naira per annum. That means if your father earns more, you won't benefit. Similarly, the National President Academy Staff Union of Polytechnics, Mr. Anderson Ezeibe, said, I have not studied the bill and we don't want to react on the surface, but I have seen one area that will not be practicable. And this area is that students should refund the money two years after NYSC. But what is the provision for someone who is not working after NYSC?
and will they all get jobs immediately after NYSC? I think that's the question the president should be pondering on and how to better the lives of people and guaranteed work after education so they'll be able to remunerate those loans. Another headline, Rokovs extorts more than 53,000 Naira from undergraduate CP removes DPO. It says four policemen attached to the Ogudu police division in Lagos State have started an undergraduate of Cyprus University, Emmanuel Nawihe, of 153,000 Naira in the Ojota area of the state. It was gathered that Nawihe was driving to a destination in the state when the policemen who were on operational duty flagged him down for a search around the underbridge area of Ojota. After obliging the policeman's request, his vehicle and his mobile phone were searched. There was nothing incriminating that was found. Instead of allowing him to continue his journey, the policeman reportedly took him to a lonely spot around the underbridge where he was first to open his mobile bank application. A source said upon citing that Nawihe had about 2 million naira in his bank account, the four policemen allegedly threatened to harm him unless he agreed to transfer the money into an account owned by another person who was not at the scene. And he refused because he did nothing wrong and that the money does not belong to him, but the policemen kept threatening him. Nawihe, perceiving that his life was in harm's way through the desperation of the policemen, he then initiated a negotiation with them, of which the policemen settled for more than 53,000 Naira and provided the account number where the money was paid into before they had to let him go. And he had to rush to the headquarter police station at Ikeja, Lagos State, to file a report. During the investigation, Nawihe was taken to the Ogudu Police Division May he identified the policemen and they were taken to the police headquarters in Ikeja where they were detained for further interrogation. It was learned that Nawihe also wrote an official statement to corroborate his claims and also provided the receipt of the 153,000 naira transfer he made to the account provided by the accused policeman owned by one Edid Young Anthony April. However, it was gathered that the money asserted had been refunded back to the undergraduate as we speak and the four policemen had been undergoing an orderly room trial. And pending the outcome of the orderly room trial, the CP has ordered the immediate removal of the Divisional Police Officer DPO Ogudu Division. CSP Celestina Carlo over failure to supervise her men linked to the extortion meted against Nawihe. I must commend the police force and the Commissioner of Police, Lagos State for this quick response. Okay, that's all the news we have for you today. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get notified when we have new news for you. This is Still One World TV and I still remain your presenter, Ogotinier. Have a blessed day.